This is Jet with Pop Austin Media, and I got artist, my brother Van, in the building. Yeah. How's life, my guy? Like I said earlier, bro, it's a movie, man. There's ups and downs, but, you know, I'm grateful. You know, I'm still waking up, getting it. Yeah, getting to it. It's all you can do. Um, let's start from the beginning, though. Uh, where are you originally from? So, my mother was in the military. So, that question's always kind of like, you know how it is if you're in the military. Oh, you're everywhere. Yeah, so I was born in California, lived my early youth in Dayton, Ohio, and then most of my years have been in a, a town in Florida called Navarre. Talk it's like about a beach town. Talk about climate change. Oh, yeah, yeah, bro. We don't see snow in Florida, but like when I was a kid, yeah, bro, we had the thick ass jackets, you know what I'm saying? Them winters are heavy. <laughs> Heck yeah. Hell so yeah, so how was childhood being, you know, a military brat? You know, it w I had a unique situation um, because when in my early years, uh, my folks are from Cleveland, Ohio, and we lived in Dayton, Ohio. So we were around a lot of family, and we also had a, a aunt, my father's sister, whose husband got stationed in the same place, lived on the same street. They had kids, so her son was like my older brother. So we had a real tight niche kind of upbringing growing up. We saw it was really just our family was our social cir circle. So it was cool, you know, it's like you with your family every day, y'all doing shit, people living comfortably. So it was cool, man. And then, uh, you know what I'm saying, when we got stationed in Florida, that was an adjustment. And, you know, you get comfortable, and then we moved to another city, and that was an adjustment. So before I got to Navarre, it was stability, then it was some instability, and, you know, you being di the new kid, oh, making yeah, new friends and all that shit. But, like, I always had, like, uh, gifts. I was ex gifted at certain things, so it wasn't hard for people to want to be like you know my friend but i was kind of like you know just it takes time for me to grow like warm up to people as a kid but uh but yeah man growing up was it was pretty cool until like uh like my parents split like everything <laughs> that no, was, yeah my parents didn't even make it that far so i feel yeah. you on that one i mean yeah, we got to we got to fifth grade halfway through fifth grade i started fifth grade oh, with tough. the dad in the house and then i came back the next semester with just moms and it was like then shit started shifting when I got to middle school, that was crazy. That's when I came to Navarre. It was like culture shock. I'm hitting puberty. No, no pops around no more. And and pops was like my my main guy. So that was like everything was like heavy. And you know, you young, you and your hitting puberty. All this shit's changing. Oh, yeah, so, you got questions to ask. So I was just quiet, bro. I, I became like this real quiet kid who just hooped. Like hoops was my thing when I was a kid. So you played I, sports. Oh yeah, pops was question. one of those guys who passed down the fucking. You know, I didn't make it, but I'm going to see if my sons can make it energy. Mm -hmm. We trained when we was young. I have a younger brother who's like a year younger, so we used to do drills. And we played, and he played until, you know, he, he probably still plays. You know, he just loves hooping. So we went through that whole thing, and, you know, that was what we did. And, uh, but, I, you know, and it's crazy because, like, I, I've, I've always been different, even though I had – you know, athletic ability. Mm -hmm. uh, I had like artisticness to me. Like I was really good at drawing. That was like the first artistic thing I did. I was okay. I was like above average, but I was like, I drew flowers real good, which is fucking it's funny to say. <laughs> it's, fun, it's weird the things that you that to like. I'm not saying everybody can do it, but the people that can draw, what they can be good at just drawing at first. Like, why am I good at drawing this? Weird. Don't know. It just it's works. So let's rock with it. And some and people who can draw, it's usually they can draw certain styles. They can't do all drawing. Drawing's a very fascinating science, you know what I'm saying? But like I was good at drawing and then I drew on the side. I did art like that on the side of me being like this jock. But you know, uh, I kind of put art down because I was like I gotta focus on being like a professional athlete. So I was really just that was really the only thing I really invested into, but you know, it, you know, it is what it is. It, I came, I became an artist years later, and I don't know, things have just been like fitting. What uh, my, what high school did you graduate from? My the high school I graduated from is called uh, Navarre High. Navarre, you said, okay, yeah, and so, that's in you said Florida. Yeah, Northwest Florida, it's like the Panhandle on the Gulf Coast, baby. And then uh, you was in Dayton, and Dayton is hood. Yeah, man, I didn't really see a lot, a lot of, of stuff, but but when I fucking left and anything I hear about Dayton, and it's usually you know it's kind of hot out there. Yeah, but in Florida, Florida man, you type that in, it's gonna be something. So yeah, like you know, my folks came from 
some some rough shit. So they was really trying to keep us away from it, and they did a good job. Shouts out know? to them for that. For real, yeah. like they, not a lot of people just can do that. Yeah, I mean they both were like, yeah, we don't want our sons going through this wild shit. So we always got moved to real safe places, you know, away, even if it meant leaving their friends and family. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Shouts out to them. Oh, yeah. um, so then, what was the transition from music? Like, how old were you when you so, started? I started super late, bro. I started I taking like it seriously. I would say even super late, super late. Music was not something I was gonna do. It was people really put the 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 juice behind me actually pursuing it, which I like that you know. But um, I was like twenty seven or eight when I started making music, bro. And a lot of people think I'm younger, which I, I'm flattered. Oh yeah, that but was uh, but uh, yeah, I was twenty eight and I was kind of like in a relationship doing family shit just trying to fill a void bro and then i bought shit just to do as a hobby and like i worked at this car wash and my homies at the car wash like i would like make beats at the car wash and then my homies was like oh you making beats they want to check it out and then like i made a song off the first beat that i really like finished and was like gonna publish or show people and they motherfucking thought it was the coolest shit and they was like bro you this is the yo, this is the first and I was like, yeah, man. They were, everyone was, like, talking big shit about how cool it was. That's and so... What did you make your first beat on? What was it? Dude, it was a, it was a trash-ass fucking doll, bro. Like, Oh, it, I mean, it ain't got to be nothing. It's always it going to be something out of the norm. It was called uh, Ma- uh, Magic's Music Maker. It was like this... I think I've heard of that. It's <laughs> some. It's, it showed up on one thing in, like, a list of dolls. And I was like, bro, it's so obscure. Like, you never see it mentioned ever. It was really, like frustrating too i was very limited in what i could do oh yeah you can't google search nothing no no, <laughs> no like, youtube's on that shit bro he just gotta like <laughs> just figure it out but it was kind of cheap and uh i remember i went to a studio close to where i'm from and then uh they told me they put it they recommended like three of them and that was like the cheapest one so i was like let me just start and see how i like it before i put some real bang into it but after my first project um I think I, that's when I transitioned. It might have been sooner, but uh, I transitioned to Studio One. So I started off yeah, engineering, making my beats, and doing my music. I bought a home studio from the jump. So I've been like busting out my own shit. That's good. Time. You don't got to worry about nobody else. I had so. to, bro. I was, I would, even though like I probably like grew up lower middle class, I never like struggled, struggled. Like I didn't have money. Like I was like, all my money was going towards maintaining, you know what I'm saying? So. I couldn't afford going to studios. I couldn't afford buying beats. I was an, I was like the head of a household, you know? So it was just like, I was always trying to like not make it affect my family and not be like too irresponsible. So yeah, yeah it was a way to where my homie was like, bro, you can really do all this with $300. And I was like, for real? And he's like, yeah, dude, people make fucking bangers, make classics off of just really low budget Crazy equipment, stuff. bro. Mm-hmm. Like, and I was like, I want to be one of those people. You know what I'm saying? And On that uh, Juicy J, that's what he does. He records in his car. Yeah, you know, shit like, <laughs> like what that. What the hell that's is just, he doing? It's wild. I think, um, I forget her name, but she's, like, blowing up right now. The singer um, who got featured on, like, Future's uh, little joint, um, the little beach joint. I can't remember the name of Damn, it. but uh, I know that it is. It's, like, his most popular. It's most, his most streamed song. She has a couple joints on her own, and then she got featured on that with her and with Future and Drake. Anyway, they had, like, a picture I saw the other day where she recorded, like, I guess her last album off of basically a, a setup like mine. It was just, like, the bottom Tams. bottom tier speaker. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, she recorded shit off I of, like. I saw that picture. Yeah, you know crazy. what I'm saying? It's fucking, like, it was, like, oh, bro. I, it made me say I need to make an album. Like I was like, I, I always wanted to make an album and I always felt like I had to get this whole big budget and go to these studios to do it. And when I saw that picture, it confirmed me just like, just doing it on my own. Inspired you more to know you can Hell do yeah, it. Hell yeah, bro. You can get, I'd be getting quality and not confident in it because I'd be like, there's no way someone who knows good is gonna think this is good because I did it right here in my fucking studio apartment. You know what I'm saying? I was real like, I wasn't super, Cause I didn't grow up around mu- people who were in the industry, so people gassing me up who don't know shit was like I appreciate it. But like when I come to a radio station where I come to anyone who's like heard shit, and they go, "Bro, what the fuck is this?" I'm like, "My homies told me like no, bro." <laughs> you know, like I didn't want to be one of those guys. No, I feel you, but <laughs> if, if you know if it's people outside the homies and they're saying that they like it though, it's like okay, it's really, well, that's the people that for real. That's the people that 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 those the higher ups care about. It took a long time for me to realize that 
that they were more important than them. Well, they, they, that's money. That's the ones that bring the money. You the other ones, they, you know, they, you know, they want them to, they need them to make the money. For real, for um, real. What's the thoughts behind the mask? I like it. Man, it's cool. It's crazy because uh, with my music, with my brand, bro, I'm so invested. I'm like a low budget Kanye, bro. Like, I think about <laughs> I every <love> aspect. <laughs> I, I like, I, I like that. That's hilarious. <laughs> I don't, don't tell yourself short, but I like I that. Go you, ahead. You know what I'm saying? But that's still greatness, even if you low budget. Like, <laughs> that's like, hilarious. Boy, on man. Level. But anyways, um, <laughs> low budget to Kanye is like a million dollars. I know, like you're a billionaire, so low budget oh, no, is still yeah. a millionaire, dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh yeah, that's true for real. But um, um, this was this was a carryover. So when I was before I moved out here, I lived in Pensacola, Florida, which is another right out another neighboring city where I'm from. And uh, I was I was performing at this event. And uh, it was a Halloween show. And I don't really never, you know, was in the Halloween buying the costume part. I'm just going out having fun with people. And I just was like, man, what can I do to dress up but not, like, dress up? So I fucking was like, I'm going to get a mask. And then I looked up masks. And I don't know how I – what I wasn't searching for it. I just stumbled on it. That's all I remember. And then I was like, I'm going to do this because it's a little bit different than, like, the mask I was seeing. And it was from a more obscure place. Um, someone was like privately selling these things so I was like directly talking to them no third party stuff like that so yeah it was cool because when I got it and I performed in it and then I came out here I was like man what can I do to kind of like stand out I was like there's probably a lot of people out here doing shit who knows what the, what the market's like competition like so I was like man I'm gonna come out here and shot you know MF Doom Daft Punk I thought about those two people. Mm -hmm. I'm just like, I also wanted people to just think about my music too. So I was like, I'm just gonna be like that, like a fucking Dark Knight, you know? Yeah. So, it, I I did it and I got the response and the reaction I wanted. And like the first thing I did, uh, open mic, I came out here. I got a lot of love from people. People like saw me and was like, whoa. And I, you know, Austin's funny. It's really. Maybe people pay to granted, but I don't. Like where I come from, it's military, it's Republican, it's very conservative. It's like mm -hmm. you can't even like look any type of way that makes anyone feel uncomfortable, or it's like no one's gonna show you no love. They're not gonna give you no. It's like a totally. So you couldn't get away with some shit like this probably back home. It wouldn't. It would not be. When I came out here, people were showing love. People were like, "This is cool." Like they used to seeing different people, I guess. Oh, it's weird. <laughs> not saying, you know, you're weird, but they used to seeing some crazy shit out yeah. here. Like, you're going to see some weird every day. Like, what? The only in Austin. That's, you know, what and everybody it's, says. It's beautiful, dog. It really is. Because it's like the least amount of judgment I ever had in my whole life. No cap. Like, even in my hometown, there's a lot of judgment. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, I came here. It's like, bam, y'all ain't, ain't tripping about none of them. Oh, yeah, we, yeah. They let it fly out here. They're having fun, man. Like, this was lit, bro. And so I just did that because I was like, one, I'm a fucking, it's a marketing thing. Two, it kind of puts me in a fucking mood now, you know what I'm saying, to mask up. It's like I go out there and, like, do my thing. It's like a jersey or some shit, you know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah, it's part of the, it's part of the, um. It's become my identity now. Yeah. So it's super trademark, and it's cool because, like, you know, it's uh, even uh. The people who I don't fucking think I think it's gonna scare people don't scare them bro they be showing that love no nah, yeah it's gonna make it like oh this man he got the he got the mask on too like you said it makes it different um where do you uh speaking of what's your favorite venue out here so let's see and then I got some we can segue to next okay. about venue okay okay speaking okay. of after that but if you could <laughs> I see what so you far I'm catching what you're throwing but yeah so <laughs> so far probably uh probably Flamingo Oh, uh, yeah, they do their, they give a, a lot, um, do a lot of shows for it, artists. They had a good sound, like quality of sound is important to me. Quality of sound was, I was very happy with. They also were very, like, open to a lot of different things, you know what I'm saying? Like, they'll have, I don't know if it's, like, open or not openly talked about, but, like, you know, you might be able to get away with some sparking some stuff no oh, yeah. you know what i'm saying so that was cool too and but the real thing was like the people who worked there from the doorman my, do my dog doug shout out doug bro shout out doug and uh the owner and the bartenders like they were all cool like top to bottom yeah and they have like a lot of people that's work that's came through here have yeah done some stuff um, so i performed yeah. there like three times i did like an open mic that was the first thing i did I did 
uh, competition with uh, the, uh, the pre roll uh, smoke out. Yeah, uh, J Soldier. Soldier. Shout yeah. out J Soldier. Big shout out. Um, so yeah, that's probably number one right now. Dope. Uh, so speaking of, you had a fiasco. Was it over the weekend? Yeah, it popped off Saturday. Yeah, over it the weekend. Saturday, with the whole, it kind of uh, the incident happened Thursday night actually, but. You know, I didn't think that was going to be really anything. And then it became a thing. It's crazy. I, I got caught wind of it. So, uh, meanwhile, brewery there, was, uh, <coughs> brewery, there was a fiasco. I'll let you go ahead and say, kind of tell the story. Yeah, man. So, yeah. And, you know, after I tell the story, you know, I want to also ha- say how it concluded. You know, Oh, yeah, saying? for sure. Yeah, because, you know, um, was but, it a good or happy ending? Let's see. But, yeah, it started, off, it started off being really cool to get opportunity to perform there because it's a I, when I went and checked it out I was like oh this is dope it gave me like this vision to really go big and I was like super excited it's probably gonna be my best show to date you know I was investing into it and I was like doing some extra shit hiring some people to help make it a you know I was like putting some some band members in the set bro like I was really about to give a show show like damn yeah, and, going uh, in, put it, you have to put it all together. It doesn't oh, happen yeah, overnight. Yeah. Oh yeah, man, it was gonna be cool. So, this was booked like in like May thirty first, like you know, it was like over a month ago, and I go up there uh, and check it out. And I always wear my mask when I'm in public, right? I'm always wearing my mask. So I go out there, check it out one day, and there was really like no static. People didn't know my, ho- my homie girl was with me. My whole other homie was with me. And we hung out, bought drinks, chopped it up with people who worked there. Everything was cool. All right, cool. Y'all ain't tripping. Um, then, you know, as we get closer to the show, I wanted to do more promo. So I brought my homegirls out there to help me out. And we're doing some promo, trying to hype people up. We within a week from the show now. It's like, all right, game time. Y'all about to get hit with everything. We about to yeah, build some excitement. So I go there. And, you know, I didn't tell them I was coming, but I've, I've, ne- I've never really told any business I was coming to do anything. So it didn't slip, it didn't enter my mind. And to do you that. already got something that you got going on there. So you figure so, out. So, yeah, like it, I'll explain myself. Everything will be cool. So we start doing stuff. And apparently it was like an issue. That's what we were told about not asking permission to film stuff. So I was like, that's fine. Yeah, we apologize. And then, you know, that was the end of it that night. So I, boom, boom moved on. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm worried about this stuff. I get an email from the people who contracted me to them telling me that they had canceled the show. So that's literally the interaction and the decision happened within just that, inter- that experience, you know, that situation. So that was when I was like, and the Hold timing up, what of the it. Fuck? Yeah. So I kind of was like, and I didn't see the email till late, late at night. Cause I don't check my emails on the weekend too much. Cause I'd be doing shit. And then, uh, before I went to bed, I was like, let me check my emails. Saw that shit. And I was like, Oh, everyone's probably asleep. So I'm about to hit everybody up tomorrow. <laughs> So yeah. when I woke up, I hit up everybody about the situation. I was like, hold up, hold up, hold up. Like, we got questions. We got things we got to talk about. Like, yeah, you can't you cancel no show without <laughs> no type of. <laughs> yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, and the thing that was crazy is, like, originally it was said, like, that it was because of my music that was canceled. And I was like, That's I saw that, which I've heard people way more crazy, <laughs> saying way more crazy. I knew it was cat, bro. I knew it was cat. Because when we had the situation and then it happened a couple of days later, I was like, oh, this ain't about oh, my music. <laughs> Y'all fucking just trying to do some like politically correct. <laughs> I was like, whoever did this thinks like, you know, it's, I think it's too yeah, Let me slide this in there too. So we can really just say, <laughs> no, whatever. But yeah, y'all, yeah. Funny, but yeah, we're going to, we're going to talk about this. So how do you know what songs I'm going to do? You're assuming I'm going to do longer songs. Like, why don't you like give me opportunity to do this, do this. And, uh, then when I pressed, they was like, well, this is what they said it all started from this situation on Thursday. And then I, that's when that other email came from and shit. So then when I got that, I was like, oh, okay. So like no one could talk to me about none of this and I can't make no adjustments about none of this, like no opportunity. So then I was like, okay. So I was like, I'm gonna go up there. Like we gotta talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> pull the knot, I'm pulling up. <laughs> so I pulled up and I talked to a very, um, shout out, her name was Kat, shout out, she was a great, uh, manager that day she was like she didn't know nothing about the situation so I told her what happened she was like sympathetic she offered to help she gave me people to contact so I was like that's all I wanted that's all I needed so I talked I contacted the owner 
and um, and yeah, pretty much. Um, you know, I explained my side of the story. I got to hear some of his side of the story from, you know, some of it was he's getting told stuff from his employees. And then I talked to, we, we talked about the booking agency and like all this other stuff. And we had a real like, you know, shout out him. He was very uh, wanting to uh, take action to make things right because, you know, he saw the post too. And I don't think he was aware of what was told to me, to be honest, you know, mm. I, and I don't think he was aware. I of could like see that my side, you know, he's a business owner. He's the captain of a ship. Some things happen out of your control. I can see that. You know what I'm saying? So once I've discovered that and then there's some things about like the way they were operating where I was like, oh, I didn't know. Like, I thought you were a little bit more aware of this stuff, but he was kind of delegating it to someone else and people were dropping the ball that he trusted. So. He made a knowledge of that. So I was like, okay, like, but, you know, we came to basically the decision that, you know, we was going to figure out where we all made mistakes, make adjustments. And yeah, we pretty much got to a, a agreements that we were all comfortable with. Right. So I appreciated him for just stepping up and trying to write something because he was like, that's not how we are. That's not how we want people to feel when they come here. We don't want people treated like that. That's not what we're about. So he was like, that's good. He got, in, yeah. Shout out to him. Yeah, shout out Will, man. Shout he was a good out. guy. So yeah, man, it was crazy. Cause it was like, you know, unfortunately we still had to, you know, cancel the show. And I, you know, I was like, I don't really, f you know, we they tried to see if there's anything they could do. And I was like, you know, I'll rather just move on, mm -hmm. shake my hands from this, get back to what I'm here to do is like provide a service to the people. Cause I was like, you know, we're going to, we're going to rock out. We're going to do something. So I'm still looking for that venue to uh, perform at and have this show. We're going to make it a whole show instead of a set. So it's going to be, it's going to be a good time, man. But Go yeah, on. dude, like, yeah, plenty of places out here and all. So oh no. yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm learning even more and more, man. And I'm just kind of like, okay, I just want to find the perfect fit. You know, I want the show to be a certain type of quality, just quality with my brand and it's got to be consistent. I can't, you know, my, my sound is big. It's important to me. So I want to have a, somewhere where they're going to do it right, treat it right. And if I got to invest into it, pay a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Then I'll do that. So, Heck yeah. So um, yeah, man. My but, bad. But yeah, that was, uh, it was cool. You know what? I want to say this on top of the situation um, because I think it does need to be addressed. You really know who rocks with you when you go through shit. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's a lot of people, and this is just me personally, I don't know if other artists go through this, that kind of get cold shoulder, don't get interaction. It could be algorithms, it could be people just like, you know, don't give you no time. But like, so you never know who's really watching, who's really like, and maybe it was the drama, maybe it was, you know, oh, I can, I'm, I'm angst about my life and I can get behind this cause because it's easy, to, you know, given the things that could be said about it. Oh, was it? racially motivated that they did this was there this was there that like people were like oh i, w I love f making this fight this is my fight you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so but a lot of people really came and like show a lot of support and a lot of love for for me and what i'm doing and it was confirmation that i'm doing things the right way so i really appreciate people like stepping up and showing me love man and like you know, I was like, yo, hitting people up, like, hey, man, what should I do? What should people were offering help, offering services. So I was like, oh, man, I didn't even know I had this kind of back. And this feels, it was good to see. It was good to feel. So shout out to Clan, man. Y'all really fucking helped me keep my spirits up. Shout out to them, man. And, and even calming me down, too. Some <laughs> no, yeah, because it could have went really south. <laughs> yeah, man, I've, I've had some experiences, bro. So I told him, like, how, like, you know, I was like, I don't know what that kind of energy that was, but I, I'm be honest, like, I was like, maybe it is. So when he set the record straight, I was like, I appreciate that. And, you know, I don't know what homegirl's issue was, who we had the first incident with, but, you know, I came there showing love to people. So I don't know that, you know, I learned that sometimes people have shit going on in the world and they project it on other people. Mm -hmm. And, you know what I'm saying? So I was like, okay. I still was like, hey, this is how I would like for it to happen next time. And I think they understood where I was coming from. So, but yeah, Shouts man. out to him for doing that. Yeah, man. But uh, yeah, the situation, my, it's been a lot going on, man. It's been a lot going on. <laughs> you just dropped a single too on some like uh, oh, better bro. stuff. Uh, she don't give a fuck. Talk about that a little bit. Oh yeah. So man, 
there's so much going on, bro. Like I dropped a song before that, Pro Life, and then I and was, that was crazy because it dropped and I scheduled the drop and it happened to be the day of Roy vs. Wade, Roy vs. Wade. Yeah, that's crazy. On the same timing. day, bro. Like that's just, crazy time. It was like, whoa! I didn't, couldn't even promote it that first day. I was like, yo. The, yeah, <laughs> exactly. It's it felt too awkward, under. bro. It felt uncomfortable just even be like, hey, uh, ladies, uh, <laughs> <laughs> go check out that pro life, y'all. <laughs> so, but my game plan was to like hit like three songs <laughs> i wanted to drop a bunch of singles to hype up for the show so i was gonna like i'm gonna give y'all boom 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 so that was number one and then she don't give a fuck was like just some joints for the ladies ever since i came out to texas i've been like seeing some real beautiful women and i was like I, they come to my shows and i'm like man i need to have more music for them to turn up to and that just talks to them so you know shout out to producer but like i made that song and i was like oh i want i can't wait to play this at my shows so I can highlight these fucking ladies who pretty and don't give a fuck mm -hmm. out here. You know what I'm saying? I've been running to them. I was like, oh, y'all spicy, bro. Like, y'all get busy, but y'all fucking got look that classiness. She's like, hey, don't let it fool you, yo. Just because I'm all cute right now. Like, we can we can get active. Yeah, <laughs> you don't give a fuck, basically. So I was like, yeah, man, turn up on you real quick. So that was like a joint that's just like really like a little, a pre a little prequel to me dropping a couple other joints that are gonna oh. be for the ladies bro like i was about to i was about to get the ladies active because like a lot of my fans are like more males and like guys like to turn up and shit like that because i do all this like turn shit a lot mm -hmm. but so you get an alternative and all so that i'm trying to spread that too, and it was yeah. a little bit like yeah you know women really are a big part of the music industry like the consumers and shit so i was like let me like also tap into them bro i haven't really made a lot of music for them so i was like i'm gonna show y'all some love and uh, speaking of that, where can we uh, stream that on? Where can we find you at, like, on all the streaming platforms? Oh, so, you know, my brother Van, brother with an A, all one word. You type that into any of them, you'll find me. It's, there ain't no one else got my name. Yeah, but, it's uh, a different one. You I can think. also go to uh, mybrothervan.com, you know what I'm saying? So, in case anybody wants to know how to spell that bitch. Let me Don't, spell my that brother Van, and then right there, too, my brother Van. Hell, yeah. So, yeah. Um, you can go to mybrotherband.com and get my discography. I think it just has a Spotify on there, but it's got like, you know, I'm on YouTube, I'm on Amazon, you know what I'm saying? I'm on a lot of places. You know, you can Google me and it's mm -hmm. gonna pull up some shit. I saw. For I saw. sure. <clears throat> and then uh, where can we find you on social? Socials at my brother van uh, on IG. I'm pretty much really on that. You know what I'm saying? I don't really fuck with much else, but you can IG. You, yeah, can, IG you, can, you can put at my brother van on Twitter, on Facebook. It's all the same on any platform you should do, bro. Oh. Yeah, but um, but yeah, um, speaking of songs, bro, there's a, I guess I'm gonna announce it here first. There's a song dropping Thursday. It was gonna drop on the show. Dope. That I think is gonna be one of the best songs of the summer, and uh, I'm gonna post about it on IG. Like the the fans helped me pick the cover art for it. That's dope. So I get to show them which one won. <laughs> yeah, that's dope. And yeah, man, y'all think that's just dope? Oh, bro, this one's going to fucking be the one. But I'm yeah. ready for that mug. I'm gonna yeah, be looking man, out for that. I'm trying to give people fucking some dope music to enjoy the summer, too. And uh, yeah, man, that's what I'm about. I'm all about spreading love and y being se your, yourself, so, uh, self-expression, mm -hmm. you know, and togetherness. That's what my brand's about, bro. So my music is all just for that. Just having a good time. And you were in the right place for it, too. That's the vibes out here. We had to lace you up with some stuff, though, my guy. Oh, shit. Hell yeah, pop man. Pop out some media merch. Oh, Rock that shit. at the next show, a video, whatever. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? Out and about. Some some swag for you. Man, <clears> that's man. love, bro. Hey, I appreciate you coming through, my guy. For real. Appreciate the, 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 the good and all that. You know what I'm saying? Always, hey, you keep man. doing your thing. Um, hey, like I said, this is Jay with Pop Off the Media, and I'm signing out. My, My brother, brother Van, let's get it. For the clan, bitch. <laughs>